Todd Sachs and Sachs Realty, and welcome to our podcast with this episode of Things You Should Know. You're really going to enjoy this podcast because with 2019 approaching, you set a lot of fitness and just health uh, New Year's resolutions. And this morning, we are with Jim Crowder, uh, who is a fitness coach and a yoga instructor, amongst other things. So you're not going to want to miss this one. It's the seven quick tips to optimal health in 2019. Jim, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yourself. Yes, uh, Jim Crowder. I'm actually with Apex Home Loans, so I, I do uh, home mortgages. Um, but my background was also in the health and fitness arena, about 20 years experience in that. I'm a certified personal trainer and um, yoga teacher and still do that part time. Um, but uh, I do understand the stresses that people go through as far as trying to eat healthy and exercise and fit it all into a busy, busy schedule. So um, yoga, that's something I've never done. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you going. Well, you'll get me there. <laughs> yes. Well, that's great. Well, uh, welcome. <clears throat> We're glad to have you here. And uh, I think it's important to say uh, early on that at the end of this podcast, we're going to have a little challenge. So we definitely want you to stay around for that. Great. Yep. So we're going to talk about the seven quick tips. Yep. Yep. So start us off. Um, the first ones relate to um, food consumption, water consumption, and so forth. And, and the first one that, that I think is probably the most important is um, people go into these eating habits like it's a ritual. They, they don't think about it. They just go on autopilot. They get up, they have breakfast. Um, what you really need to do is view food as fuel. And uh, for instance, you wouldn't eat to live, you eat to live. Exactly. View it as that. So you wouldn't fill your car with a bunch of junk. You wouldn't fill it, you know, with, with alcohol necessarily. What you would do is when it starts running low, then you put more gas in your tank. Um, so when you're looking to make healthy choices, think about that, the fact that you need to eat something that will fuel your body as opposed to putting junk in it. Don't go through the ritual nature of eating. And, and what I mean by that is we get so programmed into eating at certain times, eating certain amounts, usually too much. If you're not hungry, you shouldn't be eating. So maybe graze a little bit during the day. But if you go in and you have a big, big lunch and a big, big dinner, you're not going to sleep as well. Um, you're not going to burn that fuel off. And that's where we struggle is we, we don't view eating as, as something that our body needs. We just eat it you know, as an enjoyment sort of so thing. So you don't necessarily think that you should eat a breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Well, I mean, there's different schools of thought. I mean, the, uh, they, there is a saying that uh, breakfast is the healthiest or, or the most important meal of the day. Um, I used to believe that as well. Um, I, I did a modified intermittent fasting. I don't know if you're familiar with that, where you eat for yeah. an eight, eight hour segment and mm -hmm. you don't eat for 16 hours. So I used to eat first thing in the morning, whether I was hungry or not. And what I decided to do was wait and uh, maybe mid to late morning, I'll just have a banana. And by the time lunchtime rolls around, I'm not as hungry. So I started eating less and I, I not that I needed to lose a lot of weight, but I was, you know, I'm, I'm in my late fifties and, and I needed to shed a few pounds right around the midsection. And that did it. I mean, I lost five, six pounds in a matter of a couple of weeks just from that change alone. Yeah. yeah. Do you think it's beneficial? I, there are a lot of apps out there and they are calorie counters, keeping track. You put your food in for the day. Do you think that that helps? It depends. It depends on the, the person because if, you're diligent about that sort of thing. Um, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a mindfulness to make sure that you're, you're aware of how much you're consuming, but you know, you may have really good intentions and go into that and get the app and then not do it. So it really depends on the person and, and how organized they are. So, yeah. so you think that the, the getting back to the first tip then would be just consumption? Mm -hmm. uh, food consumption, watching that, and then also water. And, and can you tell us, I mean, so yeah, you and I had a conversation yeah. uh, the other day and we were talking about water and you know, how, whether you should have you know, eight ounces, uh, you know, 10 times a day or eight times a day. And yeah. you said that really, you, you had a different approach to that. So yeah, the, the old rule of thumb used to be 64 ounces of water a day. Well, that doesn't make sense. My wife's about 120 pounds. Why would she have the water or the same needs for water consumption as me? It doesn't make sense. So there was a research done 
And the new rule of thumb, if you will, is you take your body weight in pounds, divide it by two, and that's how many ounces you should have per day um, outside of exercise. If I'm in the gym, um, whatever water I consume in there, I don't count it. Mm. Yep, yep. So we're basically a pretty dehydrated society. Mm -hmm. Um, If you are really thirsty, you're way beyond the point where you should have been drinking more water. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. And as it relates to weight loss, and we had that discussion the other day as well, if you don't eat that well and you have a high sodium diet, you're going to retain more water. So you get kind of bloated. So drinking a sufficient amount of water is um, going to flush it out. So it's going you're going to take the sodium out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Well, I have my water bottle right to the right of me. I get, I'm feeling like I need to start drinking. I got mine right here. <laughs> yep. It's really hard yeah. to get that water in. I know for myself, like I feel like I'm forcing to drink that water. Mm-hmm. Does it get to a point maybe in the beginning and then it levels off and then you don't feel like you're really forcing it? I think what, what you may struggle with is realizing, oh my gosh, I haven't been drinking my water and you drink too much at once. Mm-hmm. Like for instance, this that I usually have around with me, <clears throat> excuse me, all day, 20 ounces, I make sure that I have five of these during the course of my day because I'm wet right around 200 pounds, so I, I want to have 100 ounces mm-hmm. during the course of my day. So having this around, having it on, you know, in my car and just bringing it with me almost everywhere I go um, has that awareness, so it's sort of a reminder. Yeah, yeah. be mindful and mm-hmm. have it with you and then... Yeah, yeah right. so yeah. I need to take heed of that. So watching what I eat, <clears throat> watching the times that I eat, only eat when you're hungry mm-hmm. and not overeating. Yeah. So tip one is really food consumption, mm-hmm. right? Watching what Vi- we eat. Viewing food as fuel and, and looking at it that way. Yep. Yep. And then tip two is to drink water throughout the day, mm-hmm. making sure so. And, and that's a good point because I'm guilty of that. So I will realize that I'm not drinking enough water and then or that i'm supposed to drink a certain amount so i just chug a bottle of water Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you're saying to actually make it part of just drinking regularly yep not really chugging water but just drinking it throughout the day exactly yep half your body weight is the amount of ounces we should be drinking right so as an example i I weigh 200 pounds so half of 200 is 100 that's how many ounces ounces i need Mm -hmm. which is far more than the recommended old days of 64 hours. Yeah, Absolutely. that was sort of arbitrary, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. great. So tip three. Tip three. Tip three is um, portion control. So be mindful of how much you're eating, and you can do things like um, use smaller plates. Um, make sure that you don't put too much on your plate. Eat, you know, whatever you feel is healthy um, at whatever meal you, you happen to be sitting down for and wait for 20 minutes and see if you're still hungry. Usually, I mean, it takes 20 minutes for your brain to figure out that you're full. So a lot of times if we haven't eaten for a few hours and we just shovel a bunch of food in our mouth, we're, we still think that we're, we're depleted. But yeah, that's we're me. That's yeah. me when I come home. I just, I'm so hungry when I get home and Melissa says I'm hungry all the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> right. Yeah. So the time. I guess maybe I need to drink more water, but... Do you recommend weighing foods, having a specific weight, or even doing maybe food prep? Yeah, absolutely, the food prep. If you're leaving for your day um, and uh, going to work, if you have it in a container, that's gonna limit how much you eat, absolutely. If you're at home, you're gonna eat whatever's there if you're hungry, or you're tired, or you're stressed. So don't don't go into stress eating, but it is a matter of pre-planning. Um, and making sure you're mindful of how much you're eating. A- another example is if you're going to um, a gathering that's gonna have hors d'oeuvres and things of that nature, you should eat something before you go because if you don't and you're not thinking about it, you're just gonna graze constantly on food that isn't healthy and you're gonna eat way too much. Yeah, and like, like I said, I had that problem. I mean, I, I think that's one of my big problems is I, I eat too fast mm-hmm. and I eat too much. Yeah, yeah. I like the way food tastes, so. Yeah. Well, again, that gets to the, the first point is um, you like the way food tastes. You're not viewing it as fuel. You're you're viewing right. it as an enjoyment. And, yeah. and you should enjoy food. But I mean, if you're used to unhealthy foods, you're going to crave those unhealthy foods. Once yeah. you cl- cleanse your palate and go clean within a week or two, you're going to not. Well, crave that's what I was going to ask. I mean, how long does it take to retrain ourselves? I mean, you hear people say, well, if you do something for two weeks, it's a it's a new habit. Yeah. You find that to be true absolutely yeah two to three weeks mm-hmm. two to three weeks yeah okay yeah yep yeah, yep yeah. all right all right so tip, tip four 
Tip four. We're going into exercise. And this is really prevalent in January because of New Year's resolutions that gyms are gyms packed. always yeah, full. Packed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For three weeks. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yep. All the regulars are, are like, oh, God, all these other yes. people are coming in. Here <laughs> they come. The February. The right? wave. Yeah. 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 The first rule is really be patient and be consistent because when you're exercising, let's talk about strength training for a moment. When you're doing strength training, and if you're writing down, you know, the, the weights and reps and so forth, most of the gains in the early phases are from motor learning, not actual strength gains. So your body's figuring out which muscle fibers to contract, which not, it becomes more efficient. And um, so you'll see on paper, you're lifting more and more and more weight. And right around the time that you're about to really see and feel the benefits, well, it levels off a little bit because you're beyond that motor learning phase. And that's when people get discouraged because they're not making progress anymore. They're not seeing it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So really be patient, be consistent. Set a goal that, set aside necessarily um, a weight goal per se. If you're going in and you're on a really good exercise program, say, I'm going to do it consistently for two months. Because and I know sometimes it's really hard because you're looking at the scale and when you're starting that strength training, you're actually going to gain weight mm-hmm. and point. it's really discouraging. Yeah. So it's just something I think you don't go on the scale. Yeah. I don't even know. Like what, how do you get over that in the mind game? How do your clothes fit? That's a real good way to view it um, because y- you can kind of see and feel how, how your body is changing. Um, not necessarily on the scale. I mean, if, if you're 20, 30 pounds overweight, yeah, you, that's a, you're obviously going to want to, you know, burn some calories Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, lose some weight, but you're right. You're absolutely right. And, and, and when I was doing personal training full time, a lot of my clients were like, well, I'm not losing quite as much weight as I had hoped. I said, how do you feel? How do your clothes fit? Oh, much better. And they can do more things. They're more active. So that's really what's important. If you're not you know, severely obese, that's really more important. You're, you are going to be putting on muscle mass, muscle weight, and that's, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so what, what's the balance? I mean, if you're cardio and you strength training, I mean, what, what should one be trying to achieve i hear cardio is really important for your cardiovascular health yep absolutely Uh, i mean i guess the weight training is good to just keep things moving right yeah make sure your muscles are are, um, staying active and things like that yep um good rule of thumb is to split time between the two if you can so if you have an hour do 30 minutes cardio 30 minutes of strength training so you have that balance um, if you're going in to lose weight and all you do is cardiovascular exercise, you're going to raise your metabolize, metabolism in the moment, but it's not going to be sustainable. What, what keeps your metabolism higher is that muscle mass. Really? Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Is it beneficial to do the cardio before the weight training or after? You should do a warm up, maybe six to eight minutes. Okay. Um, do the strength training and do the cardiovascular exercise afterwards because... Cardiovascular exercise can be either aerobic or anaerobic. And what I mean by that is is low to moderate intensity, you're burning a higher percentage of body fat and less glycogen. Um, so if you are doing strength training, um, by nature, it's anaerobic. So you need glycogen reserves. If you go in and you do cardiovascular exercise and burn that glycogen, you're not going to have as much for strength training. So you're not going to be as efficient. If you do the strength training first after your warm up, Mm -hmm. then you burn the glycogen reserves and they're not there, then it's going to keep you more into the aerobic range, which means you burn more fat. So it's a win-win. Wow. That's yeah. great. It's really great. Do you recommend doing this seven days a week, five days a week? Seven days a week isn't always feasible for people. Um, I do six to seven days a week, but I've always been a gym rat since my teens. So that's that's just me. Um, three or four times a week is, is probably what you want to shoot for unless you want to go for more. Um, I've seen many, many times, again, getting back to New Year's resolutions where people – go are just gung-ho they're type a reasonable expectations yeah and and they do it and then they burn out mentally and physically so you need at least a day or two a week to give your body a break and your you know mentally a break as Mm -hmm. well yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how about time of day 
Is there any one better time of day to exercise? Again, it, it depends on the individual. If you're a morning person and you want to do it in the day, it's a it's a great way to get you know get kind of get it out of the way. Um, it's a good way to start your day. It may not be as um, energized if you're not a morning person. Um, I am not by nature a morning person. I never have been. So for me, mid to late afternoon would be ideal, maybe a lunchtime workout. Um, I'm a little constricted on time because I need to get back to the office, but um, early evening, sometimes you're tired, but that's okay. I mean, you'll, it, it, bottom line is your body adjusts, it adapts. So if you get into a regular routine, um, your body is used to doing it at that time of day. Yeah. How, how about some, uh, a, a, some quick advice for people that don't have gym memberships? You know, um, as a yoga teacher, I, I am I'm an advocate of doing yoga um, for both stress release and and the exercise component. So all you all you need at home is a mat, and you can do a lot of exercises on the mat. You can do push ups, you can do pull ups, you could do all sorts of different things. Um, just get moving. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's the critical component is get moving. And uh, you know, you can do body weight exercises at home. You just have to know how to do them. All right. So what's our next tip? Tip five is um, when you create an exercise program, ideally say it's an hour, um, and then you find that you don't have an hour, a lot of people will just say, well, I don't have time to go to the gym. I don't have time to work out and they don't do anything. So what I recommend to, to people is put together an ideal program and then create an abbreviated version of it. Take out the elements of, that you need to do. For instance, um, if you're doing um, chest and triceps workout, um, you don't necessarily need to do the triceps component if you don't have the time because it's involved in most chest workouts. So um, compound exercises, just such as a row or a lat pull down or a chest press, multiple muscle groups, get the most bang for your buck. Make sure you do those. Even if you do a couple of sets for each body part, it's way better than nothing at all. The macro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the macro approach. Yep. So I find myself, I've been guilty of that, not having the time and instead of doing just that, I just mm -hmm. don't do anything. Mm -hmm. Yep, mm -hmm. yep, absolutely. So um, again, some is better than none. Do something every day. I mean, not necessarily getting into the gym every single day, but stretching, again, doing yoga on the off days is a really good way to, to balance that out. Yeah. Yep. Great. Yep. Awesome. Tip six. Tip six. When you're in the gym or even at home, pick up your pace eliminate or minimize I should say the time in between each set shouldn't talk to your friends for a half hour oh my gosh <laughs> then start looking at your phone <laughs> right. and yes. the next thing you know it's 10 minutes later you ideally what you should do is uh, on average each set should be about a minute the rest should be about a minute and that way you can also figure out okay I want to do X number of things in the gym that correlates to the time for every set figure two and a half minutes um, that'll pick up some cardio too, right? That's that the, gets your heart rate going. That's the benefit. That's the huge benefit because if you if you are limited on time and you don't have time to do all, all you know both cardio and the strength training, but you're moving at a really good clip, um, your heart rate doesn't drop. You're still elevated, so you get those cardio benefits while you're doing the strength training. So you get. Should those. we be sweating when we're working out? That's really a function of the heat around you. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, like I sweat a lot when I exercise. If you have a lot of men generally sweat more than women as a general rule, because they have more muscle mass there, there's more heating up. Um, but not if you're in a early indication of whether you're getting it done, no, no, not necessarily because if it's, you're doing it in a, a chilly room, I mean, sweat is a function of just trying to cool yourself down. And if you're already doing it in, in a cooler environment, you're going to sweat less. Yeah. Yeah. Or with the fans on and so forth. I like to sweat. I like to get heat up. I mean, I used to do a lot of hot yoga. I don't really do a lot of hot yoga anymore. I think that's a little bit extreme. It's yeah. a little hot. It is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you're uh, averse to that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, um, we used to do, my wife and I, she's a yoga teacher as well. We used to do hot yoga, um, 90 minutes intermediate. And, and there were times in that class where like, oh, I'm going to pass out in a minute. I just got to need to catch my breath. I'm not sure that's real healthy. Um, and I actually weighed towels and clothes and everything. And I 
lost about six or seven pounds of fluids in 90 minutes in 90 minutes wow. yeah so that was a bit much yeah 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 tip seven tip seven sleep we are a very sleep deprived society um, there are just way too many distractions. We stay up late, we're looking at our iPhones, our iPads, we're watching TV. It creates a hormonal imbalance in our bodies where we think that we need more food. Um, but mm. we're, you know, when we're full, we're, you know, we think that we need more food. When we're full, we don't know it. Um, and it increases our appetite. So the end result is we eat too much if we're sleep deprived, that's number one, and we don't have the energy to exercise and move around so so we're more docile we're if you know if you would want to go for a walk you'd rather just sit at your desk because you're tired and put your head in your hands and and so forth so sleep is critical um How much sleep it really does depend on the individual um seven to nine hours is what is you know recommended for most people i do know people who need less mm -hmm. uh, i'm very jealous of them yeah because I, I do need eight to nine hours i don't always get it but i try to get at least seven when mm -hmm. i can um there are ways to improve the quality of your sleep as well for instance um limiting uh, any food or um, liquid consumption three hours before bedtime three hours three hours yeah yeah I absolutely that, and that, that probably too. includes alcohol right I mean, if you're especially having a glass of wine or beer or before you go to bed yeah i mean a glass of wine earlier in the evening is, is fine um but if you have too much alcohol in your in your system it it interrupts rem sleep so mm -hmm. you won't get as restful asleep um, that that's a big big element food especially though because your body's still digesting the food so your your body is not resting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's why the three hours two is okay three is a little bit more ideal and uh, also powering down so the half an hour before you go to sleep read a book turn the TV off don't be looking at your iPad don't by all means do not check your email right before bed and I'm <laughs> right. guilty of that Me right? too. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, but then you go to bed and you're thinking about that. You're not putting your mind at rest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good point. So 30 minutes beforehand, mm -hmm. start reading a book, yeah. lie down, take it easy. Yeah, yeah. And, and this may be contradictory because I just said put your iPhone down. Um, you can also do these guided meditations. There's a lot of them on, on YouTube and you can put headphones on and it's very, very restful. It so, is. I mm -hmm. do that myself. Do you? It's oh yeah. It's fairly calming and yeah. I enjoy it. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So Jason Stevenson has some really good ones. He's got this this Australian accent and it just puts you. In yeah. This, you know. It's good stuff. Yeah. He has one that uh, it's a chakra meditation that is about. 45 minutes long i've never gotten to the end of it mm. <laughs> 20 minutes down i'm out yeah, yeah. well that's great well yeah. that seven tips i mean they're great tips and certainly so let's let's do some a little bit of follow-up because uh i know there's going to be people watching being like you know this is sounding great i mm. really want to get started the new year yeah where do they begin well, again, it depends on their financial situation. Um, if they can afford to get put on a program with a personal trainer, I would recommend that. Even if it's just a one-time consultation, to have the tra if you're going to be working out at home, have them come in, do it there. If you're going to choose yoga, which I, I also recommend for many, many reasons, if you're doing yoga, um, there's a ton of YouTube videos you can follow. Um, just basic sun salutations would, would do a lot. I mean, even if you're, if you're, for instance, if you are really crunched for time, so let's say you're, you're working at your desk and you're really stressed and you have some anxiety and you have just, you know, a lot of things going on. If you just get up, go into plank position where your just body is stiff, you're, you're on your hands, your arms are straight, your wrists beneath your shoulders, and push into the pose downward facing dog, mm -hmm. and then start moving with your breath. Inhale to plank, exhale to down dog. Do that a few times. It, it burns off some of those stress hormones, and you do it with your breath by connecting with your breath. It, it's the meditative quality of yoga, so something like that. But getting back to the point, um, it really depends. If you're gonna go into the gym, 
hire a trainer, have them do set you up on a program, even if you're not going to work. So you with really them. recommend having a personal trainer if you and, don't know what you're doing. You yeah, can. yeah, absolutely. What if you can't afford a trainer? What would you recommend? Generally speaking, if you if you understand how to do certain things and you've just gotten away from it, mm -hmm. if you pick two exercises per per body part two sets per exercise if you want to do a, a comprehensive program three days a week and do cardio in between that's fine or if you want to do certain body parts chest and triceps and and shoulders on one day bicep uh, back biceps and legs on another day and alternate it all depends on your situation is if you have an understanding of how to do the exercises that's a good way to structure it yeah. um, but if you don't then you know internet mm -hmm. um so I'll put this out there. I mean, I know we're going to talk about a challenge. You and I had discussed that, and and um, you know, I certainly could lose weight. Um, I right now weigh about two hundred and thirty pounds, and we had. Uh, I know that's too much, so I don't really um, just don't feel like my clothes fit really well, and it's the most I've ever weighed, in, in at least in body fat. Yeah, and uh, so I'd like to challenge everybody out there that. Um, uh, Jim and I have spoken about um, sort of 10% uh, in 90 days, which puts us somewhere around March. We'll just say mm -hmm. the end of March. We'll stretch it a little bit since we do have the holiday in there. If you feel like you have weight that uh, you need to lose and we want to do this together, um, I'd love for you to do it with me. So and if you could email me um, and tell me what your challenge is and what your fitness and uh, healthy uh, resolution will be email me at t s that's for todd Sachs. t s at Sachs realty dot com that's s a c h s realty r e a l t y dot com and uh, and let's do it together and we'll check back so jim um, can they get a hold of you can can they uh, reach out to you and and maybe if you if you have a question mm -hmm. and or uh, don't have a gym membership and you want to, some help in putting a plan together, is that okay? Yes. So how could they get a hold of you? Best way to reach me for the health and fitness side of things is um, email me at CrowderYogaFitness at gmail.com. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook, Crowder Yoga Fitness. And for those listening, can you spell that? C-R-O-W-D-E-R -E Yoga Fitness, no dashes, no underscore or anything. And uh, if you're looking for a home loan, Jay Crowder at apexhomeloans.com. And you go by the Flexible Lender. The Flexible Lender. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. And for those of you that are watching this video, you can see all of this information in our show notes. And uh, can't encourage you enough. I hope you enjoyed this. And Jim, thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Jim, we really appreciate you uh, coming in and sharing such great tips with us. I know everybody uh, wants to be healthy in 2019. So uh, thanks for watching or listening. And to make sure that you're getting all of our content, please subscribe to us on YouTube, like our Facebook uh, Sachs Realty page. And also you can find us on your favorite podcast station. We are on iTunes and soon to be everywhere else. So please check us out and uh, Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon.